Pedro Bank is located about 90 miles southwest of Kingston. A submerged marine plateau three quarters the size of Jamaica, it is the country's most productive fishery, supplying all of Jamaica's lucrative conch exports. For decades, the center of the fishing industry, Pedro is of utmost importance, with many a fisher bringing home much needed income to fishing communities spread across Jamaica's south coast. White House, West Ball and Kingston, Jamaica. All of us have a food drum. And, and uh, we're glad for it. I stay here and I find out that I can help to finance myself, you know. And I, I'm away from most problems that would create if I was in the land. I check the man about the work if I can come as basket man and he said I have to wait till the next basket man go over. And I wait, wait, wait till one day they come call me. And so we had put the compressor in the boat. And we went out there the first day. One of my uncle tell me about over here. And to me, until they have two boats over here, we just come over here. And today, a month before I start work, about three months, I'm there. So I'm working two months now. I feel good working right now. I must say, it grew me into a full man. PJ Key, PJ Bank. Because you know, it, 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 there was a lot of people that I work around that inspire me, you know, and was so much into their fishing and believe in what they do and had pride in what they do, and I've been inspired from a lot of those guys. With limited job opportunities and overfished coastal waters, Jamaicans increasingly depend on the Pedro Bank. But because of inadequate management, especially of the reef areas, marine resources have dwindled to levels that now threaten the future of the fishery and the livelihoods that it supports. The fishing was great, beautiful. You will haul traps like 200 pounds of fish, 300, and a beautiful fish, all different species you would see in each trap. But as the years pass, you can see it's deteriorating, deteriorating because of the fishing habits that um, the, we, the fishermen, started to do here. Pedro Bank has three small coral keys, originally so thickly covered with seabirds, that the keys were mined for guano, and there was a brisk trade in bird eggs between the bank and mainland Jamaica. Two of the keys are home to fishing communities, whose structures and daily activities endanger natural habitats. Middle Key, only 10 acres in size, is home to over 400 residents during the peak fishing season. The key has serious sanitation, solid waste, water, and housing problems. And these not only affect the humans, but have life-threatening impacts on wildlife as well. Mars boobies are one of the rarest uh, seabirds in the Caribbean, and the Caribbean population may be genetically distinct from other populations around the world. This is one of the largest colonies in, in the Caribbean. This is the only place in Jamaica that they actually nest. Eggs on Middle Key, about 38% produce chicks, whereas on Bird Key, 100% produce chicks, so there's a big differential in survival. I really want to see part of the, the area that was previously nesting habitat cleared of garbage, some system put in place to manage the garbage properly. It basically affects the conservation work that we do. I mean, we're here to protect the environment. The TNC sees itself as, as having a responsibility to do something about it. Starting in 2005, the Nature Conservancy, along with the government of Jamaica, has been working on the Pedro Bank to develop conservation solutions, including a thorough environmental and social assessment with viable recommendations. In 2008, a fish exchange program between Jamaica and Belize introduced participants to effective fisheries management. And in 2010, a field station was built on Middle Key. The field station allows staff to stay comfortably on the island and serves as a base for partners wanting to do conservation, enforcement, research, monitoring and community awareness activities. 2011, well, we, we now have funding to, to, to do a management plan. We now have funding to, to, to establish a fish sanctuary as part of one of our management strategies. So this building here, is going to facilitate, it's going to allow all of that to come together, it's going to allow us to have a permanent presence here um, and, and a per permanent kind of interaction with the community that is so desperately needed.
where the turtle has dug out, possibly looking for the ideal spot to lay her eggs. So if we can protect this key, I think we'll be doing so much for the turtles. Jamaica's very first offshore fish sanctuary is located in a two-kilometer radius around Southwest Key. Also known as Bird Key, the area is of high ecological and economic value and was selected using fisher knowledge and scientific data. It's a no-fish zone. It's going to be off-limits to fishers. No one is going to be allowed to come on the key unless it's for special circumstances such as research, conservation activities. I think it's a good idea. I'd lock off certain place and nobody go fishing. Could be a fishing breeding ground. Because as I hear them talk, I think I'll have a place over here where no fisherman going fishing. I think it's a good idea. It's a wise idea. Um, because I know say, um, from, from now to maybe three or four years, you will see you will see the improvement. The ultimate goal will be to extend the boundaries of the sanctuary. Uh, perhaps even have small, small sanctuaries that are connected to this one um, in other areas. Ultimately, everybody is going to benefit. The fishers, you know, the conservationists, the researchers, and so on. An integral part of protecting Pedro Bank is rebuilding connected South Coast fisheries. The Nature Conservancy has partnered with Bread's Treasure Beach Foundation a community-based non-profit organization to help administer the recently established Galleon Fish Sanctuary that stretches from Black River to Galleon Beach on the south coast of Jamaica. So we went around the island seeking for ecologically sensitive areas that can be declared as fish sanctuaries. This area was chosen primarily because of its ecological characteristics. It has mangrove stands, seagrass beds, interspersed with little coral heads and so on which makes it a prime nursery area for juvenile fish. The sanctuary is located in the Laniaka fishing village. It's a village that depends on only fishing. That's all they depend on. And they're having a problem down there by, you know, huge overfishing and they were very concerned. One thing I'm happy about is that the fishermen in that area, they wanted it, they needed it, and they were in full support of it. We're going to have to go out during the day and also in the night and see that no spare fishing, no pots, no nets, no nothing, no fishing of the salt is done there. You know this is your marketplace now? Yes sir, yes sir. Is so everything yes, good? Yes sir. All right? Yes sir. Yes sir. No more fishing. Yes sir. Well, at first I think I would warn the fisher folks, but the next time I think I will call the Black River Marine Police. I'm one who really believing in preserving nature. It's really exciting for me that I really get a chance to be a part of this and you know that, that I can also get others involved in it. It's my first time. I'm pretty excited. Can't wait to learn more and see new things. Through the support of our many partners, donors and friends, we have been able to lay the foundations for protecting Pedro. With your continued commitment, we will take the actions needed to create the future we have all been working to achieve.